Welcome to the Voice Coach Podcast, here for all your speaking voice training and guidance. My name is Nick Redman and I am offering you all sorts of nuggets of wisdom on how to keep your voice in good working order and a true representation of who you are. So if you're a podcaster, presenter, actor, speaker or voiceover artist or a general voice geek, you're in good hands. Shall we get started? Okay. Gosh, that was a big okay. (laughs) I must really mean business with this episode. Welcome back. So today we're talking more about breath. Shock horror. This episode is really more about the idea of connecting that breath support that we thought about in episode 15 with your actual speaking. So something that you can really apply to your voicing moving forward. And last time we we sort of had a bit of an insight into the complicated nature of this term support when it comes to voice training and and how it's kind of bandied around all the time. So if you are new to this podcast, I'd recommend just nipping back and catching up with that one. Ideally, I mean, head back to how to use your breath part one, which is episode 13, and then work back to this one. Because we know that support isn't just something you can turn on and implement when someone tells you to, and then your voice will just be fixed and perfect. It has to be explored and understood and built up to. You really have to start with an idea of awareness of the breath and breath release, essentially. So in this episode, I'd like to give you something um, tangible, really, to feel when you're exploring what this voice support and breath support might literally feel like in your actual body. We're going to get hands on have a wee feel and notice what the body's doing when the right muscles are doing what they should be to support the breath. So you're going to be getting a wee bit hands-on. So if your hands are cold, you might want to give them a little rub, although you're probably wearing clothes and not touching bare skin. But listen, that's your own business if you're naked in the booth. Okay, that's gone off on a tangent. Let's get straight into exploring it. I'm going to link to some great books on breath in the show notes as usual. So if you'd like more exercises and info, do take a look down there if this work intrigues you or give me a call. As with all the exercises I offer up, I encourage you to explore this work with ease and a curious energy, not like a doing and an effortful energy. Keep it playful and intriguing. Support isn't an effortful thing when it's done right. We do it all the time when we don't even know about it. That's how our bodies are designed. But in fact, when you're working on support, too much effort and pushing creates tensions that aren't useful. So things need to stay free. So always have that ease front and centre in your mindset when you're working on your practice. So this is your excuse to uh, lie down if you want to. If you don't, also fine. But if you want to lie on the floor, you absolutely have my bloody permission. (laughs) I would, and maybe I will in future, if I get some kind of lower to the ground mic set up. If there's anyone out there who's invented a lying down mic, please let me know. So you're lying down in semi-supine, you're nice and comfy, or you're sitting or you're standing. Just, you know, scan through the body to check in with the alignment. If you are standing, that's feet under the hips, knees released, spine long, bum heavy, shoulders released, jaw released. And a sigh of relief just felt like it wanted to come out of my body there. So I let it happen. Now, I'd like you to pop a hand on your hip as if you're doing an impression of a stroppy toddler or perhaps teenager. Find that big hip bone and give it a bit of a squidge so you can feel the top of the hip bone kind of curving up and over. And the front of the hip bone under your fingers and the back of your hip bone, you know, potentially you can feel that with your thumb. Find that bone and place your hand on there with your fingers sort of pointing diagonally down towards your uh, (laughs) bits and bobs. (laughs) Uh, Yes, I am a child. And uh, your thumb directing sort of towards the back of the body, like I said, over the top of the hip bone and potentially down um, at the back of the body, depending on how long your thumbs are. Have a wee squidge and a fumble so that you can sort of feel the softer bit of the side of the belly just inside the hip bone, really. So we've got hip bone, then we get squishiness inside that, as if you were just going to kind of walk with your fingers in towards your belly button if you continued in there. Now, I'd like you to do a little giggle here. Is it a bit weird giggling to yourself whilst listening to a podcast? <laughs> sure, especially if you're out and about. I know a lot of people listen to podcasts when they're walking and stuff, so sorry about that in advance. But if you just have a little giggle 
<laughs> Maybe the weirdness of the situation is what makes you giggle. <laughs> Maybe you need a wee joke. I'll give you a wee joke. Here's one. Two cows in a field. Which one's going on holiday? The one with the wee calf. <laughs> okay, that's very much a joke based on Northern Irish accents. Um, but the idea is that wee calf in a Northern Irish accent, wee calf, sounds like week off. And as they always say, having to explain jokes means they're good jokes. Am I right? <laughs> okay. Maybe you're just giggling because you're like, can she just move on? <laughs> Anywho, just notice what happens in that squishy area underneath your fingertips when you're giggling. <laughs> and if you've gone past a giggle, if, if my joke has made you just guffaw uncontrollably, that is also fine. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Whatever it is, um, just notice what you can feel under your fingers. You should feel sort of a response in the muscles under your fingers, a wee bit like a, a little pulsing maybe or gentle engagement of the area under there. This is your body offering up the right muscles to support the sound that you're making when you have that impulse to communicate. So in this case, it's your weird solo maniacal laughter at this very, very small stand-up show <laughs> between you and I. Um, but what this exercise offers is a chance for you to connect with the bits of the body that primarily switch on, let's say, when we need that vocal support. You'll essentially feel, for our purposes... Uh, the, the transversus abdominis, the TA that we talked about last episode, and the obliques. Now, as mentioned in the last step, it's the TA, the transversus abdominis, that is the one that actually interdigitates with the diaphragm. And that's the one we're most interested in. But, you know, it's under the obliques, the internal and external obliques. So you'll be feeling all of those too. So that's the feeling. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's what vocal support and breath support physically feels like inside the body. Let's connect that to the out breath now. For some of us, this will already be happening. For others, you know, it might need a little reminder that it needs to kick in when we speak. You may feel a little inconsistency in that support response because the vocal mechanics are out of whack somewhere else in the chain. What I'd like you to do now is using the image of uh, blowing out a candle. Now, forgive me, I can't remember who that image came from. This happens in voice training sometimes. <laughs> I've heard the blowing out the candle from loads of practitioners in classes over the years and apologies because I don't want to credit the wrong person. But we're going to use blowing the candle image. Anyway, point is, it's a great image for encouraging you to blow out with a little purpose and length, but nothing too intense. So you're going to imagine you're blowing out a candle on the out breath. Keep your hand on that smushy inner hip corner and blow. <sighs> Notice if you get a little response under the fingers like you did from the giggling exercise previously. <sighs> if you do, great. If not, when you're blowing that candle, just imagine there is a string attached to the inside of your lower tummy area, the bit between the belly button and the how's your father's down below. And as you're blowing that candle, the string draws in and up. So you're more actively doing something with that lower belly area rather than like we did with the laughter, just letting something happen. Now, here's the important bit. Once you've blown the candle out and you're ready for the reflexive inhale to refill the body, you've got to let that string go, let the belly drop back out again and allow the air to refill the lungs. Try this a few times. So you're going to gently blow that candle out, either feeling that response under the fingers already or just connecting to that string idea being gently drawn in and upwards. And just try that a few times. Not too much. You know, you don't want to pass out. Let's not get carried away just a few times to connect with how that feels. So that string image is us very prescriptively reminding the body how we want it to be working on an active out breath. Active as in we're going to use it to speak eventually, in contrast to your passive out breath day to day as we're cracking through life. The next step is to pop some vocal fold vibrations on there so you can actually make noise and connect voice to this support action from the body. So you can really just start with a gentle hum. That's a lovely way to start. Or the puffy whoosh sound. I've done it both ways in workshops. Either a hmm, 
Mmm, really buzzy lipped hum on the out breath, or that puffy woof. Woo. Now my cheeks are big and puffy like a greedy hamster, and I'm just letting out almost like a woof. Woo. Slowly and gently. Lip trills also great to use. So you're going to be going. Then releasing the tummy, refilling the air and repeating. Sorry, that one was awful. Need some lip balm. See, none of us are perfect. Everyone's lip trills go wrong every now and again. (laughs) Oh, look, laughter. Feel that support. (laughs) Anyway, you could even have a wee glide up and down the range. That's really nice. But the idea is just to keep it really easy, really free. And when you're finished and the sound is over, release that string, release the belly and let the air come in connected to that released lower belly area. We're not yet aiming for really, really long sustained sound. So I'm not asking you to go. For like days. We're not at that stage. We're still just using that really released, easy, let go air. And as long as you're releasing on the inhale, you'll be allowing that flexibility in the muscular system that's required in order to keep voicing supported, low effort and responsive to those thoughts that we have to communicate to our audience. So there we go. A little taster of how you can feel your support system working with your actual hands and uh, how to integrate it into your practice in terms of some breath exercises and getting the voice involved. Now, we'll be moving on to length of the breath and that issue of whether you have enough breath, don't have enough breath, how much breath should you take, all that kind of stuff in the next episode. So stay tuned. Oh, and do check out the show notes for any further reading if you're a geeky McGeekerson out there. That's it for now, though. And with with a puff of an out breath and a little giggle and a feel of my squishy hip area, I shall leave you. Thanks for giggling with me today, you big agent. <laughs> you're not an agent, you're lovely. Thanks for listening to the Voice Coach Podcast. For even more support with your speaking voice, head on over to our free community, The Voice and Accent Hub on Facebook. See you in there.